to open it, if you've got your computers open and want to follow it on the computer. Right, <clears throat> we, talked about, we talked about historical processes which have left their mark on the language. I mean, these are all processes are historical, they left their mark on the language. We started off talking about complete and incomplete processes uh, and looked at some complete processes which don't really have any effect today. Also some incomplete processes which <coughs> still have effect today. And in the last slideshow we looked at residualisms which leave scattered traces in modern dialects. But now I want to look at some more prominent processes, some one or two very important processes. <coughs> um, Okay, all right. <clears throat> well, these processes then are ones that we're going to have to work with uh, a lot when looking at British dialects. Okay? <clears throat> Netherfoot strap split, I talked about it. Nurse merger, bar strap trap split, uh, yod dropping, and long mid diphthogging. I've talked a lot about these. Let's go into them a little bit in a little bit more detail now. The footstrap split, I think, is, is, is perhaps the most important. When you're listening to British dialects, after roticity, after whether the person says r or not, <coughs> uh, in non pre positions, then um, the question of whether they have a footstrap split is important. So what you do is you look through the text and find strut words. Look through, looking, underlining all the strut words, the ones that have strut in RP and southern dialects, and see whether they have strut or foot in the text that you're listening to. The reference accents, when Wells talks about the reference accents here, he means, um, he means RP and general American. These are the two reference accents, the ones we did in phonetics one. Like most accents of English have foot, have u and a as contrastive phonemes, two different types of phonemes. We can demonstrate them by minimal pairs, uh, two words which only change with one sound, such as could and cud. Do you know what the cud is? Anybody know what cud is? Cud is what, what cows chew when they are say that they yortra 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 thank you they chew the cud and we often use it still in modern English to say to, to, to think about something I'm going to we, I was sitting in a corner chewing the cud it means I was thinking about what to do what to say okay put and part What's a part? Yeah, it's a put. <laughs> okay, it's a part. All right. Uh, look and luck, stood and stud. A stud being a, a, a male horse. So that um, uh, those accents which don't have this foot strut split have homophones here. They would say could and could, put and put, look and look, stood and stood. And I think it's important for Icelanders to realize that when you write look and luck, there is no difference in length between these two phonemes. Please remember that because they are both luck and, um, sorry, look and Luck. They are both uh, 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 not tense. What's the word? Lax phonemes. Lax short phonemes, and they're both shortened by a following forties, so they're very short. Look and luck. If it would be like look, it wouldn't be a minimal That would be like this, wouldn't it? Luke. Yeah, but this, then it, it's like two. Then minutes, it's then it's not a minimal pair. No. Yes, it's still a minimal pair because we think of this as a phoneme. 
and that is a phoneme. We just say this is naturally a short phoneme, this is naturally a long phoneme. That's all. Remember that length is not, does, is not distinctive in English, it's just a part of the phoneme. Interestingly though, while, while, since I've got this on the board, while these two are merged in Northern England accents, these two are merged in Scottish accents. Scottish accents make this distinction, look and luck, but look and look would be the same. They don't have a difference between oo and o. And that's called um, the foot-goose merger. That's something we deal with in Scottish accents. Okay. Let's just look a little bit closer at Footstrat. Um, dates from the 17th century, 1600s. So Shakespeare was just beginning to use it. Perhaps it wasn't in his speech because he was in the, out in the, in the countryside. He came from Stratford-on-Avon. Um, but now it has not taken place in the broad accents of the north of England. Broad accents is a very interesting... It's very interesting that he should use this phrase. This is Wells talking. Very interesting he should talk about a broad accent now because it's a very subjective form, word. Sometimes it means a strong regional accent, but we usually use it to talk about the northern accents of Britain, uh, northern accents of England, not of Britain, the broad accents where people say bath and not bath and strut and not strut. It's a sort of broad vowels. So it's a bit subjective there. If you see the word broad, it could mean a northern British accent or it could mean just a broad, a strong accent. Um, <clears throat> Why is the change? Why has the change come in some words like luck but not in look? Why has it happened like that? Um, okay, that we can point to some things we can say maybe the original change was blocked by a preceding bilabial. If there's a bilabial in the front of it, it may have stopped the change, but it doesn't seem to work very well. I mean, we've got cut but not put because put is a bilabial, p, and that may have stopped it. But we've got a lot of other things which, like putt and punter, which may be later words, but they, they don't seem to follow that rule. Rush, but not butcher. Again, b is, is, a bi is, is a bilabial, so maybe that stopped it. But we've also got but and butter and much. All those are bilabial, so it doesn't really... I don't really think we can say that. that the reason why this change started to move all over the original short u uh, vowel and took different words but didn't go all the way through um, I think we shouldn't bother, worry too much about why that happened just that it did that, it took more and more words into it, more and more words went from one one um, joined the merge but they didn't all join the merge so we still have a split, sorry joined the change but they didn't all join the change so we still have a split here um, and the situation, actually, I don't want you to learn this, but I want to point it out to you. It's very complicated. There's a lot of things happening in, 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 in Middle English and Old English there. Um, one of them is that you've got to remember, of course, that, that the O words like sum and brother and, and, and blood have now got a strut word, which is rather strange, whereas some of them, like mood, have got an oo, and some of them... Well, let's look at that, see what, hap what actually what's happening here. This is how Wells describes it. Um, and perhaps we can, uh, we can see this here. The, it's not coming up very well on the screen, actually, but still, but still we might be, able to, might be able to, if you can follow it on both at once. What we've got, remember, looking at the spelling, you, that will show you the original pronunciation in the 14th, and in, in the 14th 15th century. So, o, two O's must have been a long O. O and O, that's what it would be. Whereas this would have been an O, O. Okay? We can go back up here, if you like, and just notice that the Old English form for, for mood would have been mood, mood, and blood, and, 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 um, <clears throat> and gold. 
with a long O here, which is exactly the same as the Icelandic words móður and blóð or góður. Exactly the same vowel there, okay? Although in Icelandic in the old days it would have been just a long O, móður, blóð, blóð and so on. So what we've got then is this situation with a long O in some words and and a short U, U, high U, put, kut, mord, gord, blord. Okay. Then comes the great, this is Middle English. Then comes the great vowel shift. Uh, and we can always think of the great vowel shift as happening about Shakespeare's time, 1600. You know, he was going through the great vowel shift himself. And what happens is O, O moves up to long O, moves up to U. As you can remember, at the back it moves up. Okay, so we get mood, good, and blued. All right, it doesn't. The great vowel shift doesn't affect the short vowels. It only affects the long vowels. So this is the same. But what happens is you get an early, what we call <coughs> early shortening. The some of the long, some of these these vowels become become short. And instead of uh, well, this is this is a change. Of, actually, this is not that's not quite right. It would have been long put and could. Now it comes put and could, and then it changes to put and could, put and could, um, <coughs> in the in the early early uh, after the great vowel shift. And what happens there is that some of these words move over before that happens. So, blood moves over and becomes blood here. Then you get the foot strut split, so that all these words put, cut, and and blood, well put, cut, and blood, split into some of them split into oh, and some of them split into uh, a sound which is an <coughs> an unrounded back sound, sort of uh, sort of er uh, er uh, sound. I'm not doing it very well. It's a it's a it's a back unrounded sound which we which we don't have in in European languages. Very few European languages have these back unrounded sounds. Um, so we don't have them anymore. That's right. We don't have them anymore. They they existed they existed all over the place. It's up here, isn't it? It's up here. We've got o, which is unround, which is which is rounded, and then. That's the that's the uh, that's the Japanese. O in Subaru. Say it for me. Subaru. Uh, you say it's a sort of uh, uh sound, isn't it? Subaru. Subaru. You say o. Okay. Well, I, somebody told me that maybe it's a dialect, but this is an unrounded one. It's a bit like Swedish, has it? Okay. Um, o. No, o. And o, and a, and a have the un have the the this is the rounded form. This is the unrounded form here. O would be o, something like that. O. You try and say o, and you open your lips. O. I don't know if I'm making the right sound. So that's what would happen here, and that changes then to. No, here we go. That's it, and that changes to. That's O, and that is A, okay, and that changes to O, and then this sound starts moving in this direction, but we and we now use that symbol here to have strut. So what's happened here is that that blood and and cut have moved down. Blood has gone this way and moved down into the present A uh, position. Blood and cut. Okay. Whereas the others, uh, put and foot, put went down this way. Good came in later here and joined this group, but mood for some unknown reason never joined the group and it stays oo. So that's the sort of thing that's happening all the time. That's why we have these str this this very ridiculous <coughs> spelling coming. Okay, yes, 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 that could have been a possibility. Uh, we, we actually know it's not. 
because we can tell we can see from from text at this side that good here was still rhyming with with mood so that's why we know but it could have uh, just as well have done that yes right good uh, so that's the situation there and as I say don't don't worry about learning that but just remember that this is one of the reasons why we have this queer mix up this is perhaps more important mm. Okay, a very good question. <laughs> no, I, I do want you to know, this is it, I do want you to know that there is now in Europe a foot strut split, in, in, in Britain a foot strut split, and throughout the English speaking world there's a foot strut split, uh, and I just want you to know what words roughly are, are in the strut. That's what we did in, 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 uh, in, in, in phonetics. Too. If you can remember the changes, uh, that's that's better. I mean, it just depends whether you want to want, whether you want to continue and do your PhD in dialects or not. <laughs> so uh, you know uh, what I set up here. You don't have to remember it, but I mean, if you if you're in really interested in that, then try and remember it. Um, it's in the handout. It's in one of the readings I gave you. So what we've got here is is. Um, in the only in this area then not in Wales not in Scotland not in anywhere else nowhere abroad but only here you've got foot strut and these lines are not not very good as you can see I'm just doing it with with PowerPoint so I only have the lines it's something it's a it's a quite a complicated line it's something more like this actually but still that's good enough uh, and this is on the this is on the very the, 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 the I think we can open that here can't we that would um, give us that yes okay and you've got here foot and strut perhaps I can open that up and say Oh, it's not working, is it? I have to do something different later on. Because we're going to listen to this later. Oh, okay. Lovely. Okay. Foot, strut. Foot, strut. Okay, that's all we need to do there. You could do that yourself. But I've given you some, I've given, I think I've shown you this before, I've given you some real. Uh, spoken texts here. Um, this is a person saying younger. The younger generation. And here's a person saying. Uh, uh, main room of the house would be the front room. Um, so not the lounge. No, or... that's a southern phrase, <laughs> the lounge. <laughs> okay. Would be the front room. No, that's a southern <laughs> phrase, the lounge, whereas I would say would. Uh, front and southern okay and uh, you should look at this by by the way these this BBC voices I've got got a uh, go into that and look at it it's very very interesting and some of my my things come from there you can here you've got a map of of, of England isn't it typical not of Ireland just of the UK it stops amazingly here and there's nothing here but still you can you can uh, you can click these and listen to people talking from this area uh, and uh, it's very good because some of them are okay there's a young people I don't want to talk to young people I want to talk to old people norms if you remember um, this is uh, first and second generation Asian women let's keep to British accents for the moment five regulars at the White Horse pub that looks good okay and you get there um, quite a, a bit of description of the interview some of them even with with transcriptions of the interview um, lived in the same area and their lives and have known each other for a <coughs> long time okay uh, you can it's a voice clip one here we go listen Some of the words 
first what uh, are looked upon as Suffolk city words, in fact, was the original Anglo Saxon. So, words like when you get an old heron, well, they years ago, I don't think anybody can remember calling a heron, they called an answer, and then a polywiggle, you know, and then for a tadpole. Now, in America, they call it polywoggle. They, they haven't even heard of the word tadpole. So, when we from this part, you know, I'll leave that. I'm going to ask you to just look at those yourself, as it were. But, but it's interesting here that as soon as you get an English person or any English speaker and get him to talk about his dialect, the first thing you'll think about is completely uh, trivial things, like whether we call this a tadpole or a polywaddle. You know, a tadpole is a, is a young, is, is, is a frog before it comes out of the water. Did they say that they called it polywaddle? Yeah, he said that. I've never heard that before, you know. They, everybody has queer ideas about how the way other people speak. And the important thing about speech seems to them to be what, what you know. If you, if, I ask, if you ask my parents, for instance, if they were still alive, what was amazing about Sussex speech, they would say, well, we use words like twitten, which means um, a, a way to walk between two houses. It's a, it's a, it's a, gong, uh, um, a path between two houses called a twitten. And that's not really very interesting. It's just, you know, it's nothing to do so much with the pronunciation. But the pronunciation here is very, very interesting. Uh, and some grammatical things. He doesn't say which. He says what. The one, of the, one, of the, one of the most important things, what, what we hear. He uses what for, for the relative pronoun. And he says was for were and things like that. Anyway, those are, um, those are things to look at here. And let's go back so we're not wasting time. Let's go back to this. We're back in. Okay. So listen to the foot strut split. Know what words are the strut words. There are not very many strut words on foot. Well, there are quite a few, but they're not tremendous amounts. So you may even get a text where there are no strut words. It's a short text, may not have any strut words, so you can't use it. Uh, so you should go through and find all the strut words and see if they're strut or foot. The nurse merger then is another very uh, prominent process in Britain, but its use is to distinguish between Scottish and the rest. Oh, and I should say Scottish and Northern Ireland. Scotland here and Northern Ireland. Scotland and Northern Ireland here. Um, they also have... A very, a very Scottish type accent. Many of the things that happen in, in Scotland also happen in Northern Ireland, but not in Southern Ireland. So that is the Middle English files e, e, and o. Uh, it, would, it would have been e, e, and u. They centred to schwa before non prevocalic r, so that birth and berth, term and turn fell together as birth and, and birth, term and turn. Okay, and later the central vowel was lengthened to ö, uh, and in some dialects the r dropped out. So that's the nurse merger in Scotland. You can expect to hear different pronunciations of nurse, and I would say bar, berth, berth. Oh, these would probably be the same, but term and turn, term and turn. They fall in together a little bit. You usually get e and a, but still. Um, so uh, that only happens in syllabic, monosyllabic phrases in English dialects. Sorry, not in monosyllabic, but when you don't have when you have R with another with another consonant, an R which has dropped out in, in the south. In English dialects, hurry is still distinct from furry. It doesn't happen if you've got r and e at the end or in the middle of it. Hurry is still distinct from furry, but in many American dialects they have moved, merged to hurry and furry, so that, that is called the second nurse merger in America. It's gone further than in England. Um, here we go here, uh, earth, work, and, uh, and um, I think I've given you the sounds here. Earth work, earth work, earth work. So earth and work would be what you'd find in Scotland uh, and in Northern Ireland, something a bit like that, but 
with when the merger has occurred, you either get the R or not. I say earth and work. Americans will say earth and work. Okay. So, um, uh, yeah. In British accents, I've just said this, but I'm saying it again. In British accents, this did not happen if it was followed by a vowel. So, hurry, spirit, very. Okay? But in American accents, a second nurse merger has occurred. So, hurry and furry. And a lot of Icelanders hear the American pronunciation and they usually have the same sound there, um, which is very good indeed. But... Um, in American, in American accents, there has been, in some accents, uh, other mergers of vowels before intervocalic R. One of them it, we call the Mary, 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 Mary merger, which is a lovely sound. We, I have a clear, and all British accents have a clear distinction between ma, marry, me, this is trap, that is dress, and this is square, marry, Mary, Mary. But Americans will have Mary, 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 and they'll pronounce these the same. Pretty many Americans, not all of them, particularly on the on, on the on the on the West Coast, general American. Quickly, bath trap split. It's uh, again, it's a fair, much more complicated than we have to learn it. All I want to to to, to for you to learn is the fact that that it's happened in the south of England here. Here we say bath and trap. In the rest of the rest of the world, it hasn't really happened. Uh, as we'll see when we go into America, it did begin to happen in America, but it dropped out for other reasons. And you might hear a little bit of it still in Australia, but not very strong. But in the north of England and in Scotland, it's not there at all. Um, and we should perhaps listen to that. You've got different pronunciations, really. In England, you've got trap and bath, a and r. In the northern England, you've got more of an Icelandic type vowel everywhere, trap, bath. Uh, and also, also in Scottish, you've got trap and bath there, trap and bath, trap, bath. In America, you've got an a vowel, which is often longer in American, trap, bath, something like that, trap, and it's even sometimes dithongalized, trap, trap, bath, depends where you are. Um, an interesting thing which I think we should know about, about the a vowel <coughs> is that in Anglo-Saxon, you had an a vowel in the word cat, which was a which was a cat, okay, a, uh, and father, father. This vowel existed in in old English, a, and you can tell it existed in a, 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 that we can really tell the pronunciation there because it doesn't occur uh, in Latin. Latin has a and e. And we can tell that when the Anglo-Saxons began to write their language back in the, in the 7th century, 8th century, 9th century, when they began to write their language, they used Latin letters. And for the sound a, they thought it wasn't the same as e, and it wasn't the same as a. It was a cross between the two. So they made this, this cross between the two and wrote it like this, wrote it like this in fact something something like that in, in old, old not very well done so that a was an Anglo-Saxon sound it was also the Icelandic sound where we now say I but what seems to happen is later in Middle English it turned into this sound the Anglo-Saxon like the Icelandic a like the continental a so that in Middle English everybody was saying like they do here in Northern England trap bath, man, um, and you'll hear that ah quite a bit. But then in the south of England, it turned again into ah. It was raised to ah in the south of England. 
And uh, this was what has also happened in America. It's raised again to a, ah, a, ah, and a. Ah. Let's look at that in the, let's look at the position on the vowel chart to just remind ourselves. Um, and I think we're, we're looking at that, aren't we? It's not very, not very clear, of course. Yes, that's clear. Um, and you've got, you've got a, eh, you've got a, uh, if you look at the, the if you look at the um, cardinal vowels, you've got a e here and a e here and e here and a e here. Uh, English English here is a. E. Okay, Northern English would be a. E. Like like um, like American like like Icelandic. A e and a. E. We have. A, A, E, E, E. Okay. While I'm on this, can I just wind back a bit? Because I just put this up on the board. It's a good thing to have it here. It's being recorded. Um, do you remember I said that this sound here, sort of, uh, or sort of, ah. Uh, a uh, sound, an a uh, sound, um, used to be the sound of 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 uh, strut, but it's been moving very fast in the last century, in the 20th century, in this direction, very very fast indeed, uh, and it's really round about here now, and in some places in London, it's gone right down to here, so strut, strut, strut. Strat, strat, strat. It's the same sound really as mother, strat, if you listen to it. It's very strange. And uh, it, uh, so in London, the strat vowel is really like an a vowel. It's moving very, very fast. But that's, uh, we're talking about the trap bath business here. So let's get that out of the way. I won't play this now. You can see that what I've said is pretty well what I've been talking about. But let me just quickly look at what is going on here. What happened was that we get what is called pre-fricative lengthening of the sounds a and o. The two sounds, both sides of the vowel chart, a and o. They began to lengthen before fricatives. Firstly, you get lengthening only, so that buff and cloth, we can say, we can pretend it's ah here, uh, star, st staff turns to staff, bath turns to bath, pass turns to pass, and ask turns to ask, and the cloth. Words do the same. Uh, off turn to off. Cloth turns to cloth. Lost turns to lost. And frost turns to frost. So uh, uh, originally it was just um, an allophonic change, a lengthened vowel in front of fricatives, in front of unvoiced fricatives. Um, not very regular. Happened in some words and not in others. Later you get a complete phonemic split, that is to say that the, uh, that the long vowel changes its quality so that staff becomes staff and uh, off becomes off, off. So that you get bath broadening and cloth raising staff, bath, pass, and ask, and off, cloth, lost, and frost. And it's lexically inconsistent. It, it doesn't work with all words. But that's the sort of thing that was happening at the beginning of the, of the 20th century, um, in the 19, about exactly 100 years ago. This would have been the situation in RP. You'd have off, cloth, lost, and frost. But this change, cloth raising, has regressed. A gengite baka. It's not there anymore. And now we say off. The short o. 
short lot vowel here, cloth, lost, and frost. Although you can see that this changes does exist a little bit in America and some places in America. So that, that is really what's going on there. A lexically inconsistent, you get the bath trap split then and the cloth lot split. And you should think of the bath trap split and the cloth lot split as being uh, the same thing. They're happening at two different, two different places on the vowel chart. At the back here, cloth lot and trap bath here in the front. Okay. But the cloth lot split disappears in England. You may hear it in some very old people, old recordings. It's disappeared. This is the important one, the trap bath split. Uh, yod dropping, that's a way of saying yod is the y sound. I don't know why we call it, well, I know why we call it yod. Rather strange. Um, I won't go into it, it's a long time. We call it yod, the y sound, okay? So that um, we get early yod dropping, this happened two or three hundred years ago. Shoot, chew, juice, and you became shoot, chew, juice, and you, and there would have been then chute, not shoot. Uh, Ryud, crew, Shrew and grew became rude, crew, shrew and grew, and blue, flute, flew and glue became blue, flute, flew and glue. And, Amer and many Icelanders still use this u in English because it's a, an, uh, it's a good Icelandic phoneme. I mean, I've heard, I've heard so many people on planes in the old days say, Kaftit Jonsson and his crew welcome you to this this aircraft. Uh, it seems to be an America an Icelandic pronunciation, but Icelanders can know that it's three hundred years old everywhere. So they're sounding very strange indeed when they talk about a crew and a blue sky. My grandson always talks about Ryusinur. The Elska Ryusinur. There's a here look. That is that's early. That's that's uh, early yod dropping happened three three hundred years ago. That means that your yod becomes naught, becomes zero. Yod drops out uh, when it occurs after a palatal sound, which is uh, y. When it occurs after r, ryu becomes ru. And when it occurs after a consonant and l, like blue or glue, then it drops out. That's the original, the original change. And then the change that Camille is asking about, generalized rod, yod dropping. Um, no, this is not the change that Camille is talking about. This is something which happens in a very small area of, of uh, East Anglia. Uh, they have yod dropping to most or all post-consonantal environments. For example, in words like few, music, cube, and hue, they will say foo, music, cube, and who. You don't get that anywhere else in the world. It's generalized so that what has happened there is that yod has become zero after every consonant. It's dropped off after every consonant. That's only in East Anglia. But uh, um, there's some dialects where people say nu? Yeah. Later yod dropping. This is the thing that has happened. This is the thing that has happened. Uh, we're still talking about um, American. Yeah, now we're talking about American. Uh, early yod dropping, the loss of y after palatals and so on. In general American, this process has been extended so that y tends to be absent after all consonant, all uh, Cor coronal consonants. All coronal consonants are the front consonants and the, and the upper consonants. Um, uh, so that uh, you get, it in America, you get tune instead of tune, students instead of student, atit attitude instead of attitude, duke instead of duke, reduce, during, although many Americans say during, New, not new, numerous and not numerous. 
avenue, not avenue, although I've heard avenue of Americans, enthusiasm instead of enthusiasm, I don't know which one I say there, um, tule, uh, tule, I say tule, uh, suit, I think I say suit and not suit, um, I say assume and not assume, pseudonym, not a pseudonym. It's 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 quite it's quite uh, variable in England. Some people say, for instance, suit, and some people say, uh, some people say suit. Um, Susan, for instance, my mother would say Susan, but that's very old-fashioned now. Um, so that is later. You're dropping. It's becoming more and more common everywhere. Okay, you're looking at more and more yod dropping everywhere. So really what you want, need to do there is to use a dictionary and see whether a word with a yod in it, um, w whether, it's, whether it has a y in it in RP or an American and see what's happening there. I think you were wondering why it's called yod. Yes, good. It sounds kind of like the name for the letter in Icelandic, yod. <laughs> Doesn't it? Yod. Hey, there are yod. And it comes actually from Greek uh, iota, which is which is a little e sound, an iota. That's that's the reason. Good yod, lovely. Um, yod dropping and yod coalescence. Both of these are important. A. Uh, I think I should look at them. Look at this in. The, if you go back to the variables, you'll see that I've got here, you go down to the consonants, got yod coalescence and yod dropping, and both of these go to the same, the same page, which is this one. I haven't done any more to it. What's the difference between yod dropping and yod coalescence? Um, if you drop the yod in words like tune, uh, do, and you say tune and do, then you don't get yod coalescence. If you don't drop the yod and you say tune and do, you may coalesce it to ch, tune and ju. It's when di turns into ch, di turns into j, and 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 um, t turns into t. Here we go. Yod coalesc coalescence happens when the yod has not dropped but affricates the preceding t or d. Tune becomes tune, du becomes ju. So ju, duck, and ju, giving good, become homophones. They pronounce the same. And Tuesday is pronounced Tuesday. Okay? And Yod dropping is common in North America. Yod coalescence is common in Britain. So you'll see that there's quite a big difference between American word Tuesday, Tuesday, and London word Tuesday, Tuesday. Yod coalescence, the ch, where t and y have coalesced, is very London. So two things happening, two things happening there. And we'll just go on, we'll finish, I'm sorry I'm going over time, we'll finish off with long, long mid diphthonging, this is the last thing, and uh, we've, we've looked at this before, but I think we should check it because it's very important. These are the, these are the things happening on both sides of the vowel chart, both sides of the vowel chart here. Um, where you have where you have uh, um, e and o in the old days, so that's why it's called long mid diphthonging. These two vowels in the middle, they diphthong and they change to a and o, and o changes goes on to change to o. Okay, so let's look at let's look at that. Um, If you look at the great vowel shift again, you'll see that this change, these vowels all rise up 
and E changes to A and O and A and O change onwards to I and Ao, tide and mouth, so that A and the original, the middle form, A and O drops out, and instead E moves into this direction and takes that place here, and O moves into this direction and takes that place here. This is long mid diphthonging. E becomes A and O becomes O. Let's look at words like play, which would have been play, um, day, which would have been day, plain, which would have been plain. And you can still hear this monophthongal pronunciation widely in Britain. It's very, very strong in the North and in Scotland and in, in, and, and in Ireland. The same with uh, O, uh, the older form O in bone. Uh, um, uh, what's what's our, our, our lexical set there? It's um, goat, goat, bone, go home would have been, and it is still in many parts of England, go home. Go, go home with a diphthong here and it's changed to O this diphthong O has also moved up by forwarding to O so instead of A you might, instead of A the face diphthong you may have face listen to that it's very very strong in the north of England very very strong in northern Ireland and instead of O you may have a diphthong O, that's Scottish. Um, go home. So that would be like the diphthong out there, so that would be like sort of like go. This would be, uh, no, this is O. O, uh, O, my O. Oh, yeah. That's the old O. This is my O. This O, O is, a, is, is, is another movement which yeah, doesn't occur in our go. Go, it's very sort of upper class, very upper high class go home. In fact, in very high class speech, you'll say, go home. Go, I'm going home. And we make, <laughs> make fun of that by thinking it's like A, and saying, I'm going home. But you don't get it that much. It's going home. Do you want to go home? Yes, let's go home. So that is uh, long mid diphthong. It happens on both sides. And you get it everywhere in England, and Wales, except in this area here, the home areas. Here you've got A and O, you've got play and road or road, one of the two, road changing to road. But everywhere else in, in, in England, you've got play and road, play and road. And actually in America, you do have a lot of A sounds, but it's a bit more difficult than that. God, my American accent is terrible. Let's, uh, face, face. People say face. You got a good. He's got a nice face. Face. It's an e sound instead of face. You can still see that. You can still hear that. You can hear that a lot in American accents as well. So listen to that. Um, uh, play, road, play, road, road. Okay. And finally, this is moving on to the next place. You've got what we call the Great Divide. Wells uses the term to mean the junction where British and American English began to go their separate ways here. Uh, that happened back in the 17th century. Okay, It's a nice word, divide. It means a ridge or a line of high ground forming a division between two rivers. Um, and figuratively we often use it to mean a boundary particularly the boundary between life and death the great divide is the boundary between life and death and Wells uses it to mean the boundary between America and Britain I don't know whether he thinks America is death or Britain is death I'm not sure which one he means there uh, so that really is moving on into the future uh, and um, it seems reasonable to fix the date of 1750 as marking the end of the shared developments of the forerunners of present RP and general American. Next time when we look at this, this stuff, we'll be looking at later RP innovations, uh, which had no effect on American pronunciation. Okay, and American 
innovations which had no influence on American uh, on British patterns but of course they do have because we hear each other they do have effects so that's the end of that that and we'll stop there briefly okay and um, while my computer <coughs> remembers itself <coughs> so we'll we'll continue and I just uh, <coughs> repeat what I've just said for the people who are listening on the recording that <coughs> I shall put up the midterm the midterm assignment very soon now and the main question in the midterm assignment will be <coughs> Um, a question which will help you to work out the different areas in the British Isles and the different, the different uh, <coughs> dialectal areas and how you look for them. I'll put it up very soon now and explain to you how it's, how it's going to be. Um, <coughs> here we are on the schedule. I put up a, a temporary posting here where I give you the answers to Andover to the first part of the text we were doing uh, that's going to come down and I shall give you um, I shall give you here later um, I can show it to you actually I'm giving you I haven't written it yet but this is the, the an annotated version of the first text I'll put that on the, on the, on the board when I finished it um, marking things like this that I'm marking in yellow roticity and that's what you have to know about it. I'm marking mouth shift in green and so on. Uh, and so on there. I think we should just listen now. So I'm, I'm, not I'm not using this template at all. It might help you to write it down, but I shall be changing it. It looks more like this when I give it to you. Um, I think we should listen to, to Oxford now, because Oxford... Um, has a much clearer diphthong shift than, than we have. Heard so far. Let's listen to Wells's introduction on Oxford, what he has to say about Oxford. Uh, next, I thought it would be nice to have an example of the genuine Oxford accent. Uh, a child from just outside Oxford, very different, of course, from what is usually meant by the expression the Oxford accent. The local accent of around Oxford. Here we can see the long vowel again in words like bath in the item last, long front vowel. The same vowel, in fact, as in words of the set start, which you can hear in the word farmer. You've got the uh, bath vowel again in the words headmaster and staff. Contrary to what you might think from maps based on the survey of English dialects, uh, the accent in this part of the country is not rhotic, at least not nowadays. Presumably it's changed relatively recently. We hear the ing ending pronounced with an alveolar nasal, again in the expression swimmin, that is swimming. And we hear some degree of diphthong shift in the items quite and wine and fight, different from the kind of vowel you get in London, but nevertheless not the same as the standard I, and the word day pronounced as die. OK, uh, by the way, I think I should make a disc of all Wells's stuff. Uh, if anybody wants a disc of it, um, let me know. If you send me an email, I'd like a disc of Wells's stuff with his introductory introductory introductions all the way through because it's, it's very good but of course that's that's um, I'm recording this on the open web yeah it doesn't matter it's totally illegal and uh, and I don't know what Wells would do to me if he knew I was doing that uh, but it's very old now so okay so we'll listen to Oxford um, perhaps I, uh, I should just mention that one of the things we should notice is that I asked you about face shift in 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 words like uh, pay a rental and it seems that he seems a little bit, he's not, he's got very weak phase shift. Sometimes he says pay, and in other places he says pay. It's a very slight weak shift, uh, diphthong shift. 
but in the Oxford accent we'll have a very clear diphthong shift um, young children usually have very strong very broad accents it's very good to use young children um, this of course is a recording from the 1970s or 80s uh, but you still hear this accent now and as, as well says it's not the Oxford accent that we think of the BBC RP Oxford accent it's the accent of the town of the people in the town um, let's find it then listen to it and it's on the, on the web I'd like to tell you now about the holiday I spent in Brecon last year with the school First of all, we started off on a Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. Unfortunately, when we got there, we couldn't find the right place. We drove around and around until we... OK, I want to hear that immediately. Uh, listen, is it rhotic? You find a word like uh, year. Is he saying year or is he saying year? Year. Yeah. And Sunday is a nice word for the struct vowel. Does he say Sunday or Sunday? Okay, that's the sort of thing you should be listening to there. Let's go back to the beginning and do that again. I'd like to tell you now about the holiday I spent in Brecon last year with the school. Was there an R there or not? No R there. Uh, I think you're right. I'd like to tell you now about the holiday I spent in Brecon last year. But before, yes, there's no R there, but I go back again and listen to like. I'd like, I'd like. I'd like to tell you now. Very short, but he's actually saying like. I'd like, like to tell you. And we can see this later on when you get to the word bright. Listen to that, sunny and bright. That's a holiday I spent in Brecon last year with the school. First of all, we started off on a Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. Um, sunny and bright. Not bright, but bright. Okay, it's, a, it's not very strong, but it's definitely... Sort of, how old would that be? That's a diphthong, right? That's a diphthong. It would be like this. It would be... Um, it would be... You think of RP, bright... Uh, it starts here and it moves up to E. Okay? Um, and we should remember that although we write the I vowel and the OW vowel about the same, we write it like this, I and OW, we should actually, to be really clear, we should write the RP OW because it's back and it moves up to O. So, um, uh, a price and house, I and all, I and all. But usually, what happens in RP today is that these two move together. They're like that. Okay, so price and mouth, because this mouth has moved forward a little bit. So, but let's forget about the mouth vowel. Then this is this is a uh, price. Okay, and what happens to it is it moves back to R, not price but price, not price but price, and it can move up to O, not price but price. So price, price, price. Okay? That's the that's the basic price so diphthong how, change. How would we write that diphthong? Good. Um <laughs> Yeah. I think then you'd have to write it. This is the A vowel here. That is the A vowel here. You could write it either price, or if it's more, it would be price. OK. But I am happy if you talk about a price diphthong, which is slightly shifted or strongly shifted. That would be okay for me. I'm not. I, I haven't gone into to detailed uh, phonemic phonet phonetic transcription with you. I've never done that with you, and it's a, it, it's a bit sort of extra to have to do it in this class here. Um, I would do it in phonetics two, which I'm teaching next next winter. Um, but uh, don't think we ought to do it here. 
so that's what, what that, okay that's that's the price bright bright it's not very strong Kami? I have a question then I, I heard a, a joke yeah and I wonder if it, the guy would be from Oxford it's, it's, a, it's a guy an Englishman I don't know from where he goes to Australia and someone rubs his money and the guy say you came here to die the guy looks at him no I came here yesterday and exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> That's much, it's, the different so shift is much, much stronger. That would be, that would be this, it's much, much stronger in Australia. That would be the A yeah. vowel. The, 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 um, what's the, face vowel. That would be the face vowel. That changes over and it comes down here to I, whereas I comes there to I or oi. So face moves to face. Okay. And this is exact, this is, this is London, Oxford is not very strong. L we'll hear London later, London uh, and Australia is very strong. They say die to die. You come here to die, no I came here yesterday. to die. Okay, that's exactly what's happening there. And that really does cause, it's not so much a joke as a, as, 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 as a, as a, a matter of really not understanding. Uh, if you get one little sentence, which is taken out of context, then you wouldn't perhaps not understand it. But of course, everybody in England is so used to listening to the London accent that as soon as they hear a London accent, then the automatic the brain takes over and moves all the vowels about, so that you don't think about it. Okay, you understand that that's what they're saying. Um, if he were to say, "I came here to die," <coughs> then he would say, oh, "I came here to die." Uh, which would be quite different. Um, right, we've got, did you hear Sunday and Sunny? What was happening there? Unfortunately, when we got there, we couldn't find the right place. We, drove, well, we started off on a Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. A Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. Can you, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? Try it again. First of all, we started off on a Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. Afternoon. Afternoon. Ooh, ooh is all right. That's just an ordinary ooh sound. But Sunday, Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. He's halfway between the two. He's taught in school to say Sunday and sunny. At home, he will say Sunday and sunny. And he's halfway between the two. And Sunday is a little bit less split sunny seems to be completely split listen to it again first of all we started off on a sunday afternoon sunny and bright very difficult to hear isn't it, it sounds like sort of like a s sunday and sunday. sunny sunday yeah two different things there now i don't i'm not training you to hear really the differences there it's very difficult if you're not if you haven't lived in england or haven't lived in america and you, you can't hear that what is most important, though, uh, when you're doing the final examination, is to be able to point to a word like that and say, uh, this is a typical word where I should be able to hear whether it's strut or foot. But I can't. <laughs> but the fact that you know what you're looking at is the important thing. That's where you'll get most credit. Okay? And uh, because this is a strut word which I think is a bit like could we should listen to how does like foot we should listen to how he says couldn't because that's a foot word does he have the same vowel in it there unfortunately when we got there we couldn't find the right place we drove around and around and we could, he just says couldn't, couldn't find couldn't find and it's a bit uh, it's a bit I think it's a bit like sin, sin day with him there it's about pretty well the same yeah we couldn't find the right, right place. The right place. Uh, we could we um, play, place, and not place. Okay. So listen to drove and around. See what happens there. Sunday afternoon, sunny and bright. Unfortunately, when we got there, we couldn't find the right place. We drove around and around until we did. When we actually found the place which the farmer guided us to, it was near a nice stream and it was a farmhouse there was a nice river 
that like the kitten, it's, uh, it's sort of almost, if you try to listen to it, sort of loud, sounds like a kit bomb. Okay, kit. okay, yeah. Uh, that is another thing which is happening. That is, sounds almost like a kit bomb. It's perfect, perfectly exactly what's happening. Uh, this is a thing which I don't think Wells talks about very much because it's a, it's a later thing which is happening. This is goose and foot are moving in this direction. Could is moving in the direction of kit. But it's retaining its rounding. So you're saying could but kid. And it's a bit like the Icelandic u in grunnur. Kud, kud, grunnur. It's the same sound. And this is, this is back vowel fronting. It's happening everywhere in England. U, for instance, is becoming e. Geese, the knees. Haven't you, haven't you heard that in, in, in modern English? Uh, oh, next year we've got a new teacher coming in, Sarah Moss, a fantastic teacher. She's absolutely brilliant. She's very young. She's given out, she's published three or four books already. And she has a very, very um, advanced accent in English. It's a little bit north, but it's mostly estuary. And she says, geese and new and cheese day. I can't do it very well. Listen to her accent when she comes. Um, she's taking a new position in the, in, 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 in the university. Um, we go on, shall we, and listen to noise. You're hearing that there is no root in river. Listen, now, here's one. Listen to the E endings. Listen to the endings on party, early, and look up what I call, what Roach calls, sorry, not Roach, what Wells calls happy tensing. And I did deal with it in phonetics 1. Happy tensing. Is he saying party with a kit vowel, or is he saying party with a, a tensed vowel? Is he saying early or early? And you should listen to that because there's not many places left where, where people still have the old kit vowel here. Very uh, con conservative upper class RP will say party, uh, early in the city, the city of London. Most people have tensed here, party, early city of London. It's only, strange, it's only upper class RP and ghetto urban American, um, black American, where you get nothing here. You know, a, a, a black American would say, come on to my party, eh, eh. eh. Uh, it's almost like a schwa, yeah. Uh, right, baby, baby. And that's exactly the same, very much the same as upper class, upper class RP. Um, so upper class accent would get those people, get the words. Upper class, very old fashioned, sometimes called URP. Upper class, yeah, they'll get, they'll, yeah, they'll score. You mean you <laughs> use that speech, they'll score. Um, the upper class accents do some interesting things which only occur in the lower accents as well. Whereas RP will always say ing, hunting, shooting, and fishing. The real upper class people will say hunt, hunting, shooting, and fishing. Really upper class, very, very upper class. There's a girl in, um, girl in, 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 in the RMA course here. Um, from, from, from Kenya, no, from Ga no, from Nigeria, I think she is. Uh, I don't know if you, Ufuoma. She's not in town at the moment, but she comes occasionally. And she, although she's Ghanaian, uh, or Nigerian, I can't remember which, she's been brought up in a very upper class London school. And you should listen to her accent if you ever get to talk to her, because, um, because she speaks, it's quite amazing to see a girl who's, 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 who 
is very Negroid, from, from pure, a pure African, but she has this fantastic upper class accent, much higher upper class accent than I do, but she says hunting, shooting and fishing. I'm going home. And this is the sort of thing that happens in really upper class accents as well. Um, let's listen to the end of what he's saying here. Listen to party. Listen to the violin head master. Is it master or master? And so on. Uh, listen to other. Should be strut. Is he saying other? Is he saying swimming or swimming? Um, okay, let's listen to it. Nice river uh, up the stream, and there was a heat to swim in the village. Let's listen to river again. There was a nice river. Uh, up the stream and there was a heated swimming pool in the village. Now, one, the next day when we got up early, I accidentally had a... Got up, 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 up early. Not up, but up early. ...fight with our headmaster, which he got in a temper. accidentally had a fight. I accidentally had a fight with our headmaster. And it's a ah, uh, it's not complete ah. Uh. It's more like a long R. It's more as if it's just lengthened and hasn't changed. Headmaster. In a temper and threw me in the stream. The other days we're just playing around and. I think we got it very clear. The other, other, other. Um, not really other. It's other. It's like an older, old, more old-fashioned non-London strut. Okay, it could be. Got in a temper and threw me in the stream. I, that sounds a bit central to me. It's like my e e. It's not e, not stream. It's stream. I have a bit of a, a diphthong shift there. Um, he's not saying stream, stream, which is the London pronunciation. Threw him in the stream. That would be very strong in London. The other days were just playing around and going swimming and the last day we all had a big party thing. Party? And it was quite good exceptionally when our uh, headmaster uh, let us drink wine with the staff. Did you climb any mountains? Oh yeah, we climbed Mount, uh, I'm not sure of the name, but we climbed a large mountain it's well known. Mm -hmm. What else did you do? Did you have to do any school work? Was no, there was no school work. It's just a leisure holiday. OK. Um, I, we've got just a few minutes left, have we? I want to go on to Norfolk because Norfolk is really queer. Absolutely queer. Listen to these really strange vowels here. There's boys at our school who ain't heard anybody like that. And um, they laugh at me, at me when I hear them. think that's very funny. Isn't it a good thing to preserve accents? Yes, really. And uh, it, uh, I've never tried um, losing an accent, and I think, that's, uh, I think that'd be very hard to do. What's your school doing about your accent? Do teachers try to correct you at all? No, not really. I think that's a very good idea to have someone in the school who can talk like it. I quite agree. Uh, but you know, Graham, some people think we Norfolk lads are country yokels. Uh, just how bright do you think Norfolk people are? Well, they're very bright. Some people may think they aren't very quick on the uptake, but they will sort of show you up if they can. So you don't mind being called a Swede basher? No, I think that's a very nice title. Are you going to try to lose your accent? No, well, I had it for 13 years, so I don't see why I should. Very strong why, very strong diphthong shift there. And one or two nice things, dialectal things, you'll notice he doesn't use the word it very much. He usually uses the word that. Um, he says, uh, I ain't heard any, uh, anybody like that, and um, they laugh at me when I am or when I have. They think that's very funny. They think that's very funny, and so they think it's very funny. Um, he says what instead of who or which. Um, and he has different vowel lengths. It's quite strong vowel lengths there. Um, listen to it and you'll find strong 
uh, price shift, a noise toidal, uh, and so on. Um, okay, we're going to stop here. I think what we'll do next week, now what we'll do on Wednesday is we we'll go straight, we won't do any more theory on the board, we we'll go straight into London, Cockney, okay, listen to London Cockney because it's very important, and then we'll go on to the Northern Dialects, and I've put them on Ugla now, you can download the Northern Dialects, and the, and the, the things are on, the, the clips are on Ugla.